Some see these as junk cars, past their usefulness or prime. To those of us with the sickness, we see potential. Cars wait patiently. Sometimes they sit waiting for schedules to align, or because the wrong person tuned them. Sometimes they are all done and just need a race to go to. We are the stewards of them and their stories, and it is our job to make sure that they live on. Welcome to the shop. I'm Jared, and this is the Questionable Garage. And as you can tell by that intro, we have got a lot of fun projects, and they all have a very important reason for being around. I love them all, and uh, we want to get them all running to the best of their ability. But when you have that many, sometimes you need a little help on picking which one you should work on. So I decided to do what all the online streamers do and be a little bit hip pulled up pickwheel.com and we are going to spin the wheel to see what it lands on and that's what we're working on this this could be bad because um they're not all ready to be worked on all right let's see what fate decides Yeah, no, this is probably the one I want to work on the most, but I'm also the most afraid to work on the Wedding Supra, the Silver Supra. A lot of you are asking for it. It's one of those cars that it's even more important than the Sport Satellite, and it has to be perfect. And I'm so afraid to get started on it because it means too much. So it just sits, and it makes it worse. I'm, I'm redo. That's a mulligan. All right, what does our mulligan have for us? Come on. Something I can actually do. Try hard. I probably shouldn't have put them on the list. Try hard doesn't need anything. It, we've got the Hemi back in it and it works, it drives. The only thing I need for it is a race to go to. There, there's nothing to do to that car. All right, that's not really a mulligan. That's just, that's not my fault. I could see working on this one, our Drift E30 but I can't. We are waiting for a part and it's not here yet. I'm really bad at letting fate decide what we're doing, but I, I can't work on this one because um, the part's not here yet. Dang it. It's got fun noises too. Earl Eaker, you know, he is almost ready. We got a lot done in the last episode and he could probably be running in a couple hours, but Honestly, I feel like there's like five weeks before the next event that he needs to be at, and that's that's too much time to be working on it now and have it running. So I'm, I'm gonna spin again. Five weeks is too much time to be responsibly working on Earl. Today we are going to do... Hey, it's a segue to today's sponsor. Are you like me and stay up most nights worrying it might just be the day you finally end up in that pot of boiling water? I'm Clarence the Crustacean, and the only thing that can help me sleep is Dream. All right, Clarence the Crustacean, I've got it from here. And much like Clarence, it's hard to sleep for me sometimes. Life can be very stressful, and even with a good bed and all the preparation, sometimes you're just stuck laying in bed worrying about life because, well, it can be stressful in there. Sometimes there's a lot to worry about. Maybe you're not as worried about becoming the next seafood boil, but there are things that are keeping you up. And that is where Dream comes in to help. It has been a big life changer for me. You wake up refreshed without that lingering groggy feeling that some prescription medications give you. And the great thing about Dream is you're able to use it as needed and it is safe enough to be a part of your every night routine. They have plenty of flavor options so you're gonna be able to get what you like. It has no added sugars, only 15 calories. It's gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan, non-GMO, keto-friendly, made with the highest quality natural sleep supportive ingredients. You also have the options of regular strength and extra strength. Now the extra strength has been shown in clinical trials to improve sleep. Sleep is the most important part of your day. It's what allows your body to regen, repair, and get ready for the next day's stress. So if you're not getting enough of it or you're not getting good sleep, you're not gonna be prepared to handle 
what that next day has for you. Now, if you're ready to start sleeping better and add Dream into your daily routine, head on over to shopbeam.com slash the questionable garage and use code questionable and you can save up to 35% off your first order. Again, head on over to shopbeam.com, the questionable garage, and use code questionable. You're gonna save up to 35%. You're gonna find those links in the description box and in the comment section down below. Get a better night's sleep now. Okay, okay, it's Earl Leaker. We're gonna go ahead and get him done and running. It's just, it feels weird because we're not under an extreme timeline for a change. But if you remember last time, we reset up the entire fuel injection system. Originally it was running TBI, throttle body fuel injection. The injectors lived up in top and that was run by a Holley Terminator ECU. The fuel distribution mix through the tunnel ram was not the best. Coupled with awkward airflow with cam choices, it just, he failed, it did not go well. So we got a wind intake manifold. We modified it with Mr. Gasket fuel injector bosses. We took the injectors from Project Roadblock, our Hellcat red eye fuel injectors, and we put them down near the intake valves where really your fuel injection should be. And that's pretty much where we were left off. We now need to get wiring done. We need to finish dressing the front of the motor. We need to get fluids back into it. Throttle cables figured out. And we got to start it up and see if we fixed it, I hope just because of my sheer perseverance, stupidity, I don't know what it is, but we're going to finally get this thing ready to go and uh, time to wrench. All right, time to get our pulley put on. And I know it's tempting. Just whack it with a hammer. You can give it a couple taps to get it started, but you really don't want to. One, you're slamming your uh, thrust washers when you do that, which they don't really like, which I don't blame them. It's not a nice thing to have happen. Easier to roll and damage your crank seal. You do want your mandrel in as far as you can get it. So you're pulling on as many threads as possible. Easier if you got smaller fingers. Okay, the way this is, this will sit against your pulley and that's where the nut's gonna drive. The other fun challenge with this engine setup is it's double keyed. Double keying crank is a really good idea. It's also why we got the six bolt pulley, crank pulley already ready for a blower drive. This is also a little bit tighter of a fit in comparison to some other setups. When I say little, I mean a whole lot, my goodness. Don't gotta worry about blowing any hoses off when they all bolt together. That was some effort. Kinda see, we changed the wrenches. I've got that blocked against the body and thankfully this isn't a fresh install. Whew, I have the witness marks from before to go off of and we're fully seated. Holy moly me. Uh, that was a little effort, in case you're wondering. Now, with these pulleys, you got different depths and final landing points. So, you need an appropriate amount of shims, spacers, washers, whatever you want to call them. Oh, I lied. I need it right there, just a little bit. I think that's good. Okay, so washers, shims, they sell actual kits. Really good grade eight washers will do the thing as well. Um, you wanna shoot some RTV down into the keyway area because that can be a path for some oil leakage. Okay. But now we got this all together and the timing set in, we can run our valves, get our intake down for real, real wire, and then get back to burning some tires. Okay. All right. 
already, valve running time. Now, if you've heard the term valve running or run the valves, that's just your adjusting. Uh, you got solid roller camshafts, so it's a little bit different than hydraulic where there's some preload and stuff like that. There's no preload. So you've got to set this pretty much right on. It's good for RPM because there's nothing that's going to collapse. When you have a hydraulic lifter, great for drivability, great for just universal adjustable, um, low maintenance, but because you have, you're relying on oil pressure, it can squish on you a little bit. And if it squishes down, you then aren't getting all of your valve lift. There's a couple different ways. You can set it top dead center, run a couple valves, turn it over, run a couple more. I prefer the EOIC method for each cylinder. It takes a little longer in that I'm just gonna go cylinder by cylinder and rotate over. We got the plugs out, so it's not that hard. But EOIC, exhaust open, you start adjusting your intake valve to where you want, which is 16th thou. Intake close is when you adjust your exhaust valve, which is 18 thou on this cam. Double check your cam. Uh, they're gonna have its own specifications, generally speaking. Intake valve, exhaust valve. Got tools, so. Okay, intake open. As soon as our intake closes, all the way, so we're watching our movement, we're watching our movement. Still moving, still moving. Okay, our intake is closed, the IC of our EOIC. So that means we can set this one to 18 thou. Now your exhaust is gonna swell more. That is why there is a difference. Um, on your intake and exhaust uh, sides, normally speaking. And you want just a little bit of drag. And the way these work, so the outer nut basically preloads it and then you have an Allen that jams against the stud. So like there, I can't move it at all. That's too much. There, we're getting just a little drag. So we'll take this. And that, it's just a little bit of drag on it, which is exactly what we're looking for. There. All right, so our next exhaust open. So rotate around. Once we start to see our exhaust opening, now I tend to go to, you know, pretty open. There we go. Okay, and one more check. Boom. Rinse and repeat seven more times. So uh, cue time lapse. I'm gonna put on my fan and a little bit of music. And enjoy raw running the valves and the valve covers go on and then we're bolting the intake on and then I rewire the fuel injection system and then and then Earl's back I can't wait <laughs> You know how sometimes you just think something is gonna be a huge problem and you're stressing how you're gonna figure it out and it ends up not being that bad? That, that's been our throttle linkage. So if you remember, I brought up and was mentioning how, uh, you know, the way that used to mount definitely wouldn't work because the fuel rails are there. Well, I just cut it off, jogged some aluminum in there and uh, <laughs> works absolutely perfect. We get full throttle and everything. So now 
all I need to do is one, get a new throttle cable because we melted that one and it was really sticky. If you remembered, we had all those throttle springs on it. It'd be nice to get rid of that. Also, this was designed for the Edelbrock intake. Well, that doesn't work and I could, you know, just kind of jog that, but then throttle cable wants to be on that side versus out here. That's an easy problem to fix, but I'm, you know, sometimes things work out. We did create one little small problem. I have to pop the studs out of the valve cover so it can drop and go up. I could sand a little more, but I really wanted that thickness in there. I don't know that it needs to be that thick, but it was, so we kept it that big. Getting closer. It's amazing how all these little things take all the time in putting something together. I know this might look terrifying with that loose bundle of wires, but what we are doing is changing the injector sub harness. The way it was built in is it all went into the throttle bodies. Obviously with it down below, we don't need that anymore. So I've pulled my injector wires out of the one connector and then we deleted the second connector and I'm putting it to what Holly uses for their injector sub harnesses. Cause I have a couple of the kits and I have the end I need for this to pin out. Now I'm gonna cross reference the wiring diagram. Cannot stress this enough when you're wiring. Look at your information three times before you actually do it. It will save you a lot of time. I've, I've made that mistake a lot. The reason I say that, I am 98% sure Holly matches their letter code firing, firing order list by color. So it should be just as simple as I got to pair the two banks of reds together. We have two power feeds that come in, one for each bank. And one splitting to four is totally fine for what we're doing. None of the injectors are firing at the exact same time. So it cleans it up a little bit. So all the reds will trunk down into just two. And then we just got to crimp our ends on, connect that, replace our melted power cable, plug in a couple things, and then a lot of magic on that laptop. Hopefully not having to totally redo a throttle wizard if I do, or not throttle wizard, but map wizard. I'm hoping I can just basically switch it to port from the top. If not, we'll save it, copy our VE tables and timing tables over um, into a whole new map if that's what it takes, but that's probably about two and a half hours away because those wires aren't gonna fix themselves. So enjoy me talking over a time lapse again. And I'm gonna get back to work. So I got all the wiring done. It's just, it's one of those things where it's even not doing the pretty wiring. It takes a lot of time, made sure it was right. We should fire up, it should run pretty good. The firing order, the way it fires the injectors in the TBI is not any vehicle's firing order. Like 18726543. And I don't know of an engine. Maybe that's a Ford, I don't know. Let me get those clamps a little tighter. <sighs> Earl, God bless America. Why are you this way? Let's keep working on the map, get our battery to charge correctly and figure out why 
The really expensive starter is now not working. Okay, so I got the angry computer to let me finally talk to it. We've got the map loaded that I tweaked. Again, uh, is pretty close. We need to reset fuel pressure still. I'm updating my actual tuning software firmware to be able to talk to the computer happily. Uh, and then we got the starter fixed. It spins over great. Um, so I want to put power to the computer and just see what happens. No fuel leaks. Starter's working. It is running amazing on the multi-point setup, uh, multi-point being multi-port point fuel injection. The injector's down at the bottom. But I now have an oil leak from the rear china wall. And the right thing to do is drain the coolant, disconnect the fuel lines, pull the distributor, disconnect the radiator hose, pull the intake. So what we're gonna do is I already blasted it with my shop clean from Wellworth. That works really good because it is a true no residue dry. Um, some of your brake cleans and, and parts cleaners have like an oily film. So I've blasted the whole back of the china wall the best I possibly can. I might disconnect the fuel filter because that'll give me a little bit more room. But we've blasted it as clean as we can possibly get. And we're gonna just put a ton of silicone on our finger and just, just slap it right up against it. Not the right thing to do, but it's the right thing to do. Uh, again, it's doing the wrong thing the right way. Uh, it works well 80% of the time. The biggest thing is one or two drips is okay. And this was borderline one or two drips. It's not a pressurized area. The oil is basically just slinging off the shaft of the distributor and bouncing around a little bit under there. And I just don't want major oil leaks because I don't want to be a guy going out slicking up the oil pad. So uh, we're going to do our best to get it slowed down. I actually think after mentioning it to you, I had thought pulling the fuel filter would be a good idea. And then I just mentioned it to you. And yeah, that's going to be smarter because... I can get this side pretty good, but I really can't get to that side, so it does feel good having oil run again, and again, we're just off the rip, running pretty good. And you might be asking, Jared, you're working on something surprisingly early, considering the next, like, burnout contest is, uh, November. This is September. You're working way ahead of schedule. There's a uh, fundraiser in five days that I really want to bring Earl to. <laughs> so, uh, uh, don't you worry. I'm not planning far ahead at all. Just trying to minimize your dribbles. I feel so wrong doing this, but. Earl's not been very nice to us lately, so I don't know that he, de he deserves some of the stuff maybe being a little bit off. A little wrong. Again, do it wrong, but do it right. What's your biggest example of doing the wrong thing the right way when it comes to your car builds? No judgment. My first intercooler piping on my uh, Mark II Supra. Went to the Home Depot, got me some Schedule 40 and some glue. It uh, went in, but you couldn't really take it back out. It worked. We're gonna go driving around the parking lot. I probably should try to get the windshield a little clean. You keep seeing them pop up. Wellworth is a uh, company I'm working with now that I'm actually really excited 
to be doing. There's always like extra quality chemicals that you can only get basically if you're a professional. And that's what Wellworth was for a while. And then they realized some of us in our garage could use some really good stuff too. So they've got a full line of professional stuff at insanely good prices and code in the description. You save by using my code so you get even more off and you also support the channel doing it. So check it out. Cleaners, chemicals, detailing supplies, professional shop stuff. Good hand cleaners. Help me, help yourself, get a good deal. I don't know what it is about this car. It has never behaved on the channel, ever. You go all the way back when it was still Nissan powered, it was a problem. Everything I've done to it, it's been a problem. The last thing you saw, I think, was that first start, right? Things were happy. Everything was going really good. The car's running great. You need to take a little bit of fuel out of it, but all in all, it was really good. And then I heard a little top end noise, which I wasn't too worried because I wanted to build a throttle cable setup that I'd actually mount to the valve cover, so I had to pull it anyway. Two of the new rockers had roller bearing failures, so they suddenly had a ton of clearance because the bearing dropped. Good news is we caught it before anything fell down and hopefully didn't hurt the bottom end. I did put fresh oil in it just because, you know, the $100 of Brad Penn we just put in it. That's Earl, but this is also Earl. Together, we gotta stay excited. Cars, I don't, I don't know what it is about some cars. They just fight you and you just keep going. And then maybe eventually, like that wild horse that you're trying to break and you've got them in the round pen, they finally come up to you and take the grain from your hand. Right now, Earl's still just taking blood, but maybe soon he's gonna take a little bit of grain, I hope. But we've got a new throttle cable set up. Welded that bracket into the valve cover. The reason I'm not too worried about shifting of the valve cover, it's stud mounted. It's not a cork gasket, it's a reusable rubber gasket. And I'm a gorilla, like I'm, I'm a monster and I could not get it to deflect when I shook it by hand. So, just a throttle cable there, I don't think will be a problem. Also, if you remember, we had the big spring because the sleeving of that cable melted a little bit. Well, I got a new sleeve. Don't need the 15 return springs on our setup anymore. We've got it routed even further away from our headers and we got our heat shields in place. So heat shields in place, fuel filter back. I ran it for a little while off camera and we only got one drip. So that awful, awful job of just slathering a ton of silicone mostly worked. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drive them around the car park a little bit, make sure he is all set and then it's clean up. And the next scene you guys will see is either it blown up and this episode just get shelved for a couple months until I drop it from a helicopter or we're at a car show, which is gonna be a whole lot more fun, I think. That's where I want it to be. Comment, where do you think it's Earl falling from a helicopter or going to a car show? Both are equally possible. What do you think? Well, we are not at the shop and we are not at the Freedom Factory with a helicopter dangling Earl yet. That's still possible. We have Roadblock, we have Earl. We are sitting here ready to go in. We're waiting for a couple more cars to get here. And apparently because Earl is not road legal at all, um, we might get a police escort in even though we kind of have our own. Um, but I do want to say, the only reason I was able to get both cars here, aside from all the wind noise, Steve, thank you. You're very welcome. Very and welcome. how I met Steve, you were a fan of our dust ball videos and you randomly showed up to one Absolutely. and I was randomly there. And uh, so what that means is do a dust ball. You might meet me and might get roped into very questionable things and giving up your entire Sunday. This is true, but it's worth it. <laughs> Good cause. So um, I will say this, even with the super sticky tires, um, I barely blipped the throttle and it's spinning them. So there's a chance Earl might actually be behaving and ready to do all the cool stuff. If nothing else, he looks really cool. And it's the only car on the highway that has ever actually trumped Roadblock. There's a friend, Jason, who's helped put all this together with the, it's a Titan. 
it's not a diesel Titan, so it's at least cool. So after getting our escort to the parking lot with the car show, I was absolutely blown away. With nearly 800 cars registered for the awards and an estimated 1,300 cars across all the parking lots, the turnout was absolutely amazing. And the variety of cars were absolutely insane. I met up with my friend David Patterson, that dude in blue, and we took a quick walk around just a small portion of the car show. There are imports, classic German, modern German, modern Japanese, lowriders, trucks. If you liked it, it was there. Initial estimates on the money raised was nearly $40,000 for a show put together in less than eight days. And once the show wrapped up, we weren't so lucky to have a police escort back, so we had to make our way to the trailer on our own. And sitting in traffic, Earl did amazing. This is what it looks like to drive Earl in traffic. Temperature's great. Man, it feels good to be back in the shop after this weekend. Also, again, want to thank Steve for dedicating almost 20 hours in one day to shoot up here, help trailer down uh, Earl so we could take him along with Roadblock to the Appalachia High uh, fundraiser. Uh, it was great to get out, see insane community support and just being able to uh, get back to uh, the area of, I've lived for a little over 20 years. Big thank you to Auto Metal Direct and Nitto Tire both. They contributed items to the fundraiser auction. So thank you guys. Next time you're gonna see Earl in person, if you'd like to. Uh, the plan is to bring him out to that dude in blue's Cosmic Drift. I believe it's the 26th of October coming up here shortly. And then just after that, we will be down at the Freedom Factory trying to get some redemption. That was a bit of a pathetic burnout last time and hopefully everything's going to uh, go the right direction this time. Feel like it is. So again, if you're here in Georgia, you wanna see him sooner, October at That Dude in Blues event, Cosmic Drift at the Lanier Motorplex Raceway, Caffeine and Octane Motorplex Raceway. I don't know, they bought it and I can't remember the name. Or down at Cletus and Cars where you can also see it on the live stream if you're not able to make it to Florida in person or of course my follow-up video after that. Now, I don't know if the next episode I'm gonna randomly spin again or not, or if uh, I'm just gonna pick the next one that's closest to being done, because we're gonna get them all chipped away, finished up, ready for their events, and uh, let the cars keep telling their story, because that's a big part of what a car is. It, it has a story to tell, and you know, sometimes you just gotta fight them to finally let you know what, what that story is, kind of like Earl. Also, if you haven't seen it, there are channel memberships and I do have a Patreon out there. Right now I'm kind of revamping it all a little bit just because I want to make sure, I know a lot of you have asked to support extra ways. Really, really appreciate it. You watching, you subscribing, and you sharing the videos, that's the biggest thing you can do. But if you did want to do more, it's there. Working on setting up a couple more things like a Discord and it's just, there's so much time put into these cars, it's hard to make special videos for just, uh, Patreon and, and members, so I feel bad not giving you guys extra. Uh, so we're working on some stuff there. Most likely it will be a Discord just to where uh, everyone can join, but then there'll be special member rooms where maybe instead of a random wheel, members and patrons pick the card. And eventually we'll have some random videos where uh, all of your names will pop up so that way uh, everyone else can see the cool kids. Appreciate all of you who are members on both of those platforms. We're gonna wrap it up. I'm Jared, reminding you guys to always make questionable choices. Don't give up on your projects. 
they're worth finishing. They'll fight you for it, but seeing how many uh, people just absolutely love seeing this car, it, it was worth it. See him to the end. We'll see you.